Hi everyone, a very good morning to all of you. I welcome you all to another session of RBI 247, wherein we discuss finance current affairs. Let's get started. The first topic that we're going to talk about today is SEBI. SEBI has proposed norms or regulatory framework for ERP. What is this ERP? ESG rating providers. Okay, the next news is about IRIDA. Indian Renewable Energy Development Authority got infrastructure finance company status from RBI. The third one is a keynote speech given by the Deputy Governor of RBI at FEDAI. We will also learn about what is FEDAI and what the Deputy Governor talked about in his keynote speech. Okay, so the first news today is about SEBI. SEBI has proposed a regulatory framework for ERP. What is this ERP? ERP is ESG Rating Providers. ESG rating provider. Sabse pehle samajhte hai, what is ESG? ESG here stands for Environment, Social and Governance. We have already heard of this concept before. It is nothing but a framework maintained by any company for itself where its projects will be working towards. So we all know investors today, even corporations today are becoming socially conscious, socially woke, aware want companies in which they are investing to you know further invest or to work towards environment to work towards social projects for example reducing carbon emission so you see these uh, you know even the startups today they are working towards environment they're working towards planting trees reducing reducing global carbon emissions creating carbon capture Okay, so these are the, uh, the various projects that companies today are working towards. One of the main reasons for this is investors, jo hai, they are socially woke, they are socially aware, socially conscious. And investment in such companies automatically increases. At the same time, there is high chance of increasing turnover. The customers base of, this of these companies today who are working towards environment, social or governance projects their customer base increases, their revenue and turnover in uh, fu future increases. So that is the focus of companies today to work towards ESG. Now, ESG mein kya kaam ho raha hai, kaise ho raha hai? These all things we get to know or we as investors or somebody who, you know, who's purchasing uh, products from any company, how do we get to know whether this company is working towards these projects or not is through ERP mechanism that is ESG rating providers. So they are nothing but rating providers towards ESG. So using some key performance indicators, the investors get to know about company's ESG, ESG framework that the company has created for itself using some key performance indicators. Now these providers using these key performance indicators, they give information, information to investors. Okay, so information and us company ka kitna exposure hai towards a particular sector and how are they working towards either reducing carbon emission or other social projects or environmental projects. So SEBI ne inka regulatory framework enhanced kiya hai and for the companies, now it is mandatory to disclose their ESG mechanism. So, disclosure mechanism ko enhance kiya hai. SEBI is working towards increasing or enhancing the disclosure mechanism of ESG. And at the same time, the rating providers hai, inka framework ab thoda mandatory kar diya hai. Okay, so abhi voluntarily organizations were reporting of their ESG or their projects that they are working towards. But now SEPI is going to make it mandatory and not just voluntary. Let's see what is the news. So SEBI introduced a consultation paper for regulatory framework for ESG rating providers. We have what is ESG rating providers. Now, this ERPs, they can be allowed to register with SEBI under the CRA norms, credit rating agency norms. The role of ERP has become important. Like I said, because the investors are now socially conscious. So in the role of ERP is now becoming important because making investment decisions is dependent on how a company or an organization is working towards various sectors. Okay, so now an ESG rating measures a company's exposure, like I said, and exposures to long-term environment, social governance risks. A lot of risks are involved when a company invests or when uh, the projects or products of a company are working towards this ESG mechanism. So, a lot of risks are involved. Hote hai. And one of the uh, you know functions of an ERP, ERP or an ESG rating mechanism is 
to measure the company's exposure to various risks that are involved. Further, efficiency increase करने के लिए okay, so these are the risks that are involved. The risks involving uh, such issues such as energy efficiency, worker safety, these are the kind of risks involved when an organization is working towards an ESG mechanism. These are the kind of risks involved. Further, ESG rating ka function kya hai? It is intent, it intends to provide information to its investors or various market participants. For example, investors, analysts, other corporations and corporate managers. Okay, recently ESG rating uh, providers have come under the scrutiny over concerns of reliability of their assessment. So, unki assessment jo ERP rating, ESG rating providers ki jo assessment hai, is it reliable or not? Because of that concerns have been raised and thus SEBI has brought out a regulatory framework. It has just proposed the regulatory framework. It has not been brought out in action. However, going forward from 2022 to 2023, mandatory steps will be taken towards this ERP. So one of the steps that SEBI has brought out is that now SEBI mandated top 1000 listed companies by market capitalization to make filing as per BRSR. What is this BRSR? Business Responsibility and Sustainability Reporting. It is nothing but when a company reports, reports to the audience, to investors, to larger market participants about its business responsibilities and sustainability what it is working on, what are the projects that it is working on, the products that it is launching. So I'll give you a brief example of this BRSR. This is on an extra of how a company, you know, uh, it reports to the audience or to the market participants. So general disclosures are to be made by the company, kitni uski paid up capital hai, where is the registered office, who are, are the directors of the company, name and contact details of person who are supposed to be contacted in case of any queries. So these are the general disclosures that are to be made and then product and services that are to be, you know, uh, these disclosures related to products and services that a company is working towards. Unse kitna turnover ho raha hai. How is the company actually impacting, uh, you know, environment or society or corporate governance? How is the company working towards that? And also what are the various risks associated with them? So, for example, if an investor wants to invest in any company who on the face of it is working towards ESG sector, but not actually working or there are a lot of risks involved. So, for example, renewable energy, mein, solar, there are a lot of risks involved. Hote hai. Natural man-made hazardous risks are involved. Worker safety is a very big risk. Hota hai. So, investors should be aware of these risks. So, SEBI ka jo twin objective hai, the twin objective of SEBI is to in to improve credibility of the organization and credibility for the investors and to provide credible information to investors and other market participants. And at the same time, the compliance cost is to limit it. This is BRSR core, that is Business Responsibility and Social Reporting Mechanism ko mandatorily adopt kara jayega. Currently, voluntary, voluntarily companies do this, company report under this BRSR mechanism, but now it will be mandatorily done from this financial year. Okay, so yes, like I said, select key performance indicators ke basis pe, jo ki ESG areas pe work kar rahe hai, ye information provide kari jayegi to various investors. Okay, the K, uh, KPIs that are key performance indicators in the BRSR contains number of intensity ratios. These intensity ratios tell and in, uh, you know, an interested investor or any market participant who is interested in the organization or the company, ki kya kya intensity ratios hai. And these intensity ratios refers to, for example, glo uh, G, glo uh, greenhouse gases emissions, water consumption, wastage generation kitna ho raha hai by the company. So these are intensity ratios that are mapped using KPIs, key performance indicators by these ERP. Okay, so these intensity ratios are based on both revenue and volume. Revenue kya hai? Company ka ek product se kya revenue generation hogi? Like I said, what are the risks involved and volume pe bhi kya impact pad raha hai? Okay, so the aim is to mitigate greenwashing at scheme level. Uh, you know, greenwashing concept we have already studied in one of the previous videos. Greenwashing is nothing but when a company, on the face of it, they say ki yes, they are working towards environment or, you know, uh, reducing uh, GH, GHG emissions, carbon emissions. They are working on it on the paper. 
बट दे आर नॉट एक्चुअली वर्किंग ऑन इट और देर आर लॉट ऑफ रिस्क इन वर्ड तो इसको ग्रीन वॉशिंग कहते हैं ग्रीन वॉशिंग इज फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर एक कंपनी ने ग्रीन बॉन्ड्स उठा लिए मार्केट से सो ग्रीन बॉन्ड्स इज अ मैकेनिज्म वेर इन कंपनी कैन रेज फंड फ्रॉम द मार्केट एंड फर्दर दे से दैट इट विल बी वर्किंग टूवर्ड्स ग्रीन सेक्टर टूवर्ड्स एनवायरमेंट और सस्टेनेबिलिटी और रिड्यूसिंग कार्बन इमिशन सो अ कंपनी ने ग्रीन बॉन्ड्स तो इशू कर लिए एंड इट इज टेलिंग ऑन द फेस ऑफ इट दट दीज आर द प्रोजेक्ट दैट वी आर गोइंग टू बी वर्किंग ऑन बट दे आर नॉट एक्चुअली डूइंग इट सो दिस कॉन्सेप्ट इज नोन एज ग्रीन वॉशिंग वेर इन द कंपनी इज यूजिंग इट्स फंड that are meant to be used for some other purpose but are actually being used for any other purpose and not the purpose it said or it intended to be okay so this is one of the aims of sebi and ab iske andar sebi ne ek aur mechanism laya hai first humne pehle samjha ki 1000 listed companies will have to be reporting under this brsr mechanism further further the second is कि जो एसेट मैनेजमेंट कंपनीज है फॉर एग्जांपल म्यूचुअल फंड 65 परसेंट ऑफ देयर एसेट्स अंडर मैनेजमेंट इन विच शुड बी फर्दर इन्वेस्टेड इन कंपनीज दैट आर एक्चुअली कंप्लाइंग विद दिस बी आर एस आर तो जो ए है एसेट मैनेजमेंट कंपनीज या फिर म्यूचुअल फंड्स, इनके जो एसेट्स हैं दे शुड बी इन्वेस्टेड सिक्सटी ऑफ दीज invest at least 65% of these assets in the companies who are complying with brsr mechanism or who are actually reporting on this brsr mechanism okay yes so this was about uh, the news isme aur bhi bahut zyada detail oriented esg disclosure norms aaye hain for example giving you an example agar koi project uh you know in if any resolution is going to be passed by the board or by the members of the organization any on any project now this project is supposed to be working in esg so uske resolution pass karne pe kitne sare noes aaye hain kitne sare yes aaye hain this also has to be reported this also has to be reported this is one of the disclosure norms under this esg framework so what is sebi doing sebi is tightening the disclosure norms of esg mechanism and also esg uh rating providers okay the second news today is about irida indian renewable energy development authority ab irida ko rbi se irida has received infrastructure finance company status what is this infrastructure finance company status now see uh, last year also ek energy organization ko data and energy capture organization ko i think in the last budget it got a uh, infrastructure status so what happens is if any company gets infrastructure status receiving you know money from investors or attracting investment becomes easy an investor would want to attract in any organization who is working towards infrastructure and kisi ko agar government se already infrastructure ka status mil gaya hai so if government has given an infrastructure status to any organization which is working towards a particular sector in this case working towards renewable energy so investors will be attracted to invest in such organizations jinko government se ek infrastructure ka status mil gaya hai so irida has now received infrastructure finance company ka status further you know attracting investment for this organization will be easy ab foreign funding bhi easy ho jayegi and their exposures will now be expanded exposures towards investment receiving investment okay so it was earlier classified as an investment and credit company now an infrastructure finance company the grant of ifsc status in is the recognition of irida's 36 years of infrastructure and financing development 36 years ho gaye hain and with ifsc status further irida irida will keep continuing the work and will keep continuing the target of the government towards 500 gigawatt installed capacity of non fossil fuels by the year 2030 so this is already what irida was doing but further this will be enhanced it will be functioning better with a lot of exposure a lot of investment that it can now attract because of this infrastructure finance company status with the af e ifs if c with the ifc status irida will be able to take higher exposures in renewable energy financing further the status will also help companies to access wider investor base like i said fund mobilization or investor base up expand ho jayega for any company that has received infrastructure status from the government in this case it has received from rpi resulting in competitive rates for fund raising foreign funding bhi up aasan ho jayegi 
Recognition of RIDA as an IFC will increase investors' confidence, enhance brand value and generate a positive outlook in the market. Okay. A uh, little information about IRDA is important in the exam. In phase 1, this is very important. Hai. Who is the chairperson and managing director? Pradeep Kumar Das. Uh, it was formed in 1987 as a statutory organization working towards renewable energy development. Working under which ministry? Ministry of New and Renew Renewable Energy. Okay. The third news today is about a keynote speech that is given by the Deputy Governor of RBI at FEDAI. Let's see, first of all, what is this FEDAI? In the 17th conference, pe, 17th annual conference, pe, which was held in Egypt, the Deputy Governor gave a keynote speech. He basically talked about SRO, Self-Regulatory Organizations. What are they? We will understand through his speech. Okay. What is this FEDAI? Foreign Exchange Dealers Association of India. Foreign Exchange Dealers Association of India, as the name suggests, ki jo bhi foreign exchange dealers, hai, banks or authorized dealers or agencies that are working towards foreign exchange mechanism, unka jo association hai, that is Foreign Exchange Dealers Association of India, it, the, uh, the function of it is to oversee the day-to-day -day functioning of foreign exchange mechanism, foreign exchange transactions. Further, ye rules bhi banate hai towards how rates, that is foreign rates are managed are calculated and further transactions take place between countries very easily. In addition to creating rules, FEDAI assists the member banks in acting as an advisor training personnel. So this is also the function of FEDAI. To act as an advisor to the member banks, it trains its personnel at, uh, for foreign exchange businesses. And accreditation we also provide karte hai to foreign exchange brokers. Okay, so uh, the Deputy Governor talked about India's GDP, how it has increased from 2010 manifold to now 2022. The nominal GDP has increased from 2010 from 64 lakh crore to now 273 lakh crore. He talked about the GDP of India, he talked about external trade. So in PPP terms, he said that India is the third largest country in PPP terms, country in the world and fifth largest in terms of market exchange rates. Also, he talked about external trade. This has increased many, manifold from 29 lakh crore in 2010 to now 137 lakh crore. So, he, uh, yes, he discussed about the GDP, external trade and the fact that India is the third largest country in the world in terms of PPP. Okay, so the prime, he also talked that the prime minister in, you know, 15th August last year, on 15th August last year, he talked about punch Pran. He talked about Panch Pran, five focus areas of India, which includes, you know, focus on development, moving forward. He talked about history, that focus of citizens should be towards history, history ko, uh, you know, wo kare, uh, prevent, kare, preserve, kare, culture ko preserve. Kare. Also, unity. So, these are the few focus areas out of these five, which the Honorable Prime Minister in his a uh, speech on 15th August last year said it is Panch Pran. Five focus areas that citizens sh should be responsible for or to be working towards these Panch Pran. Five focus areas. So the deputy governor talked about this, mentioned this in his speech. So this is important. Ho jata hai. And the goal of making India a developed nation by 2024. Also, up self-regulation ki baat karte hai, which was the focus area by this deputy governor speech on this in this deputy governor speech by the governor deputy governor so he talked about self regulation organizations so what are these self regulations organizations like the name suggests these organizations are regulated by themselves they create rules and regulations for the entire market or industry and further organizations working in this industry will be working as per the rules or regulations made by these sro FEDAI is one of the SROs, SRO, self-regulatory organizations working in India. So self-regulation has been a long history, has a long history of existence in various professions, not just in financial sector or foreign exchange sector, but in various professions and works as a means to encourage and promote appropriate conduct by the members of that profession. Like I said, these SROs, organizations, they create rules and regulations for the entire market or for the entire industry. And further, 
organizations working in this industry have to abide by these rules and regulations the roles of sro are very wide are expanded for example kuch roles and uh, roles and functions of these sros let's have a look at that preservation of market and financial integrity one of the roles of sros working specially in financial market so preservation of financial integrity protection of customers and investors and uh, they work at establishing minimum benchmarks like i said rules regulations benchmarks are provided by these sros and further organizations working in any market or any industry have to abide by these rules and regulations and these minimum standards or benchmarks must be ethical and also they provide behavioral standards these sros behavioral standards maintains karte hain benchmarks maintain karte hain they help instill a professional market conduct amongst their members and to ensure customer and investor protection sro often get involved in documentation and operational guidelines one of the functions of sros documentation of operational guidelines jo guidelines ban gayi unki documentation implementation monitor ho rahi hai nahi ya transactions ko monitor karna for example fedai work towards foreign exchange mechanism and overlooks or monitors that smooth functioning of foreign exchange transactions is taking place so monitor karna rules and regulations jo ban gaye hain unki implementation ko monitor karna at the same time documentation of various guidelines that are formulated okay they are also empowered to take appropriate action in case of any violations further dispute resolution framework ka bhi ek role hota hai sro is acting as a watchdog sro acts as a watchdog against unethical or dubious practices could also foster greater confidence so agar if they are working towards unethical or dubious practices this create a confidence in the investor or anybody who's in you know who's regulated by these or who are impacted by the members working in that profession or in that industry okay also monitor monitoring the code of conduct like i've already told you okay now the, the, there are certain concerns related to these sro for example what happens is they create rules and regulations for a, a particular market or industries and conflict of interest between industry members can take place this is one of the concerns that is there towards self regulatory organizations sros so there uh you know they create roles or, or set standards rules and regulations towards any market or any industry and further the members of these industry they can have conflict of interest okay arising between uh these member industry members conflict of interest that might arise between various industry members okay such conflicts can lead to weakening of the regulatory structure okay so yes the deputy governor talked about the evolution of these sros jab inki uh, when we look at the history in india the history of sros has developed over the years and through formal regulatory frameworks for sro so initially it was working informally and slowly and slowly it converted into a formal structure fad fadai was formed in 1958 before that the organization that was working was exchange bank association so initially only a few banks were working under the guidelines of guidelines laid down by exchange bank association so initially kuch hi banks ko dealer banks ko dealer associates ko ye permission di gayi thi to work as an exchange bank which will work towards foreign exchange to so exchange bank ki kuch hi banks ko permission di gayi thi which were working under the guidelines of eba working before feda but तो ये इनिशियली था जब फेरा आया था फॉरेन एक्सचेंज रेगुलेशन एक्ट 1947 में फॉरेन एक्सचेंज रेगुलेशन एक्ट विच फर्दर आगे जाके ये फेमा बना था फॉरेन एक्सचेंज मैनेजमेंट एक्ट ओके सो अंडर फेरा ओनली अ फ्यू फॉरेन बैंक्स वर डेजिग्नेटेड टू बी एक्सचेंज बैंक्स एंड वर परमिटेड टू प्रोवाइड फॉरन एक्सचेंज रिलेटेड सर्विसेज दीज वर वर्किंग अंडर द गाइडलाइन ऑफ ई फर्दर ये आगे जाके फेडा बना which became a formal structure okay in the initial years of formation of feda the primary function was setting ground rules and rules and regulations through which rates can be measured or calculated what rates foreign exchange rates rates of settlements for interbank and customer transactions the primary objective was to bring uniformity in these rates to pehle to rules and regulations code of conduct banayenge towards these rates jinse rates calculate honge and 
further bring uniformity in these rates offered by different authorized dealers. In me, the different authorized dealers they're giving out different rates, different rates for foreign exchange. Kare hai. There has to be uniformity in that, and usually rules and regulations was supposed to be made by Fedai. And further, in kya kam hua? They became instrumental in conceptualizing the detailed rules, like I said, and conduct of foreign exchange business. Okay. So this brings us to the end of the session. The deputy governor talked about self-regulatory organizations and he focused on FEDAI, Foreign Exchange Dealers Asso uh, Association of India. Yes, this brings us to the end of the session today. This is our app. If you haven't uh, yet downloaded, you can. Sari information about any exam you can get over uh, here. Let's get on with the questions today. The first question is, which of the following statement is that correct about SEBI proposed norms for ESG rating providers? SEBI mandated the top 1,000 listed companies by market capitalization to make filing as per business responsibility and sustainability reporting. This is true. KPIs, that is key performance indicators in the BRSR contains a number of intensity ratios. This is also a correct statement. The aim of SEBI is to mitigate greenwashing at the same level. This is one of the aims of SEBI. This is also a correct statement. Okay, second, which of the following statement is are incorrect about IRIDA, Indian Renewable Energy Development Association? It was formed in 1980, no, I think in 1987. Further, recently IRIDA has got infrastructure finance company status from RBI. This is a correct statement. Pradeep Kumar Das is the current chairman and managing director of IRIDA. This is also a correct statement. The first is an incorrect statement. So second and third are correct statement. However, you had to find out the incorrect statement. So the answer here will be one only. Okay. Which of the following organization was working prior to FIRDA in India? I've just explained Exchange Banks Association. Working prior in India, prior to FEDAI. Okay. The last news. Inflation, every month inflation data aata hai on 12th and 14th respectively of every month of the previous month. So previous month ka information, uh, the inflation data is released in the next month on these dates, 12th and 14th respectively, CPI and WPI data aata hai. So 12th and 14th March, mein, uh, the data that we have received is for the month of February and RBI ka jo ban hai inflation ka I hope aap sab logo ko pata hoga that is 2 to 6 percent that is 4 plus minus 2 percent this is the inflation ban that RBI targets now what is the inflation this time in the month of February humne December mein padha tha December mein we had a good news the inflation was around 5.9 percent which was marginally below this target this cap of 6% in January however it increased to 6.5% which gave a shock in the economy ki finally we had spoke ki finally inflation come ho raha hai 2 to 6% ki band mein aa raha hai and finally we would see ki repo operations jo hai repo rates reduce honge and further RBI will go towards accommodating monetary policy uh, rates reduce karke but the RBI increased its rates even though the inflation was under the target which was shocking to a lot of you know a lot of uh, market people people in the market experts okay and uh, rightly so next month jo hai, inflation was zyada ho gaya. it rose to 6.5 percent the cpi data 6.5 percent ho gaya in the month of january further now in the month of february inflation is 6.44 percent 6.5 say it has reduced to 6.44 percent in the month of february However, it is still more than the 2 to 6 percent band of RBI. It is six, still more than the 2 to 6 percent band of RBI. And further now experts are expecting key further RBI will focus on rising the repo rate. With this, you have to tell me what is the current repo rate. Bohut important hai, ye pata hona chahiye har time pe, what is the current repo rate. RBI ka current repo rate kya hai, you will tell me in the comment section below. This is a wrong statement because last month it was 6.5 percent in january 2023 now in february it is 6.44 percent core inflation remained above the mark of six percent what is core inflation when from cpi data you exclude the food and fuel items because these are volatile so when you exclude the volatile food and fuel items from the cpi data you get core inflation and 
This time the core inflation has been above six percent mark. Now inflation in the food basket was five point nine five percent. This is correct. Five point nine percent inflation in the food basket. So the first statement is incorrect here. The second and third are correct. Yes, this was the last. Yes, this was the last question today. I hope you are preparing for your exams. This brings us to the end of the session. I hope you like the session. Thank you.